Hi, hope you're doing well. So uh, we carry on the talk concerning uh, we revise together or revise with me in this series. Last time we were talking about literature review. What is a literature review and its place in research? So before I carry on concerning the topic, because today we are going to talk about two elements, two important elements. We talk first about we talk about or we carry on the talk about literature review and also we talk, we talk about research gap because most of the time i get this question from a lot of my viewers I said what is research gap and what is its place in research so let's start first by something so important like so many times when people write their literature review they just put it like for example in the first section of their research maybe we are talking about an article or we are talking about a dissertation or even a doctoral thesis but you have to know something that is so important that the literature review itself is an answer to a question you see when you write your research questions often you think only that these research questions are going to be answered through practical feedwork or and you so eventually you will answer it just in the practical side of your work but that's not entirely true actually i'm go actually i'm going to give you an example to make things a lot easier to understand for example if i'm doing an investigation like for example uh, the adaptation of uh, an ai technology to enhance writing skills let's say i'm going to do this research and you want to write first a literature review what are you going to do in literature review in fact the same question you are going to ask and you are trying you are, you are going to try to find answers in the literature review maybe some scholars or scholars have done the same research so basically a literature review is an answer to a question and if you remember last time you'll find the video here or here of last time we talk about function functions of literature review we talked about first conceptualization which is thinking usually about the whole research we talked about feasibility of research. We talked about broadening and limiting the, the topic. And of course, understanding the current state of literature. And this is important. And even we talked about few elements, like for example, we talked about summarizing all the relevant up-to-date sources. So this itself is uh, an answer to a question. For example, I want to, to talk about AI. So basically, if I want to talk about AI in my dissertation, I have to provide several definitions. So these definitions, I need to be up to date. So this is one thing. So even when you are writing in your introduction or general introduction, you can say that the purpose of the literature review is, and this is so important for students, you have to remember this, that when you are writing your general introduction, you have to say that, that I'm going to provide with a summarize some um, provide and maybe summarize up to date sources so this is one maybe you are going to do compare and contract so con contrast sources so indicating similarities and of course pointing out discrepancies and here it's so important because we talk about the second point which is research gap because people say what is the research gap if i'm going to summarize all the old definitions and i'm going to write them down if it's something missing, that is going to be the research gap. Maybe I'm going to find, for example, people talking about AI in every field and every country, but I didn't find like, for example, someone is talking about it in my hometown. I live now in Jilfa and I don't find anyone talking about uh, utilizing or implementing such technology, let's say in a middle, middle school classroom. So that's that's a research gap. I find everyone talking about it. Maybe they have done it in secondary school, middle school, but no one is talking about, let's say, primary school. Then it's a good research gap. That This is a research gap. Most students, when they think about the research gap, they think sort of really big gap. Actually, it's a, a tiny, small gap. And that gap you are going to fill when it comes to research methodology. Okay, so of course, we also talked about critical evaluation of each source and contribution to literature, because sometimes uh, you have to talk about definition and how these definitions contribute to the literature. Sometimes you will find research gap there. And of course, also integrating all what said before, providing an argument and reflect the current state of the topic. See, sometimes you have a topic and that topic needs a lot of argument to be used. What you are doing in a literature review, actually, you are trying to find evidence and you are going to use this evidence to strengthen your claim so this can be also a function of a literature review so always remember 
that a literature review has a function in your work. If you don't find a function in your work, means that there is a problem. Because a lot of students sometimes just they write, they write, they write, and we ask them, why have you done a, a literature review? They said, okay, just a theory, and we need a theory. Actually, that is so wrong. Now let's carry on our talk about. Let's carry on our talk about uh, lit uh, lit uh, function of literature review, and let's talk about uh, refining research methodology. Uh, let me zoom this. Okay, good. So mm, wait a minute. Okay, this is now much better. So when you talk, uh, talk about the, uh, another function, which is refining research methodology, most people think, or most students think, that there is a split between liter between theory and practice, between the literature review and the practical side. Actually, no. Even in research methodology, there is what you called you need literature review. So the significance of the practical part of the study lies in its production of a new and reliable knowledge. That's the practical side. Now, although for this matter, research is required to devise a research methodology that's also supposed to be unique, so that's part of the practical side, a literature review is, a review is also necessary to arrive at decisions about the various aspects of methodology, because you are also reading in the literature what is the best way to design methodology for that specific topic? So that's the process of designing a methodology. Sorry, that's some sake. Designing methodology also, also entails within previous works which have dealt with the same or at least similar topic. So what you want to do and what you should do, you should find similar topics to your topic and try to see how they did it when it comes to practical fieldwork, when it comes to collecting data. So the goal should be always attain effectiveness and efficiency by adhering to tried and true techniques at the same time, anticipating and avoiding potential issues that may arise. Because I'm going to design a, a practical site, unless I know what I'm doing, and usually we don't, usually we have to read. So I find that most people, they did it this way. And even sometimes when I read, I find what kind of problems they have encountered. So before I start, because I'm aware of all the problems they have faced, so I don't need to take the same path. And this is so important. Now, consequently, a list of the questions expand beyond how a study is going to be conducted to how previous research has tackled the same problem. So this is a question you answer in a literature review. Sometimes we don't put it in the literature review. Sometimes we add it or to research, uh, research methodology consideration. This is sometimes so important. What are the reasons that vindicate the choices taken from the approach, sample, sampling techniques to data analysis procedure? Just today, just now, I was uh, sitting with my with my colleagues, the students I supervise, and I've told them that every decision you make, you have to tell me why. In fact, it's not only why, but sometimes even the why not. For example, if you are going to tell me that I'm going to opt for this approach, and said, good, then said, I'm going to take quantitative, good, or the mixed method, good. I will ask, why not the qualitative? Why? Then the sample, why this sample in particular? Why not another sample? The sampling technique. So you tell me that I'm going to use this sampling technique, so I said, why and why not? Of course, also the data analysis procedures, so what are the advantages and the potential quandaries of each decision? Now, all in all, a review of the literature at the stage of methodology would ensure maximum yielding of results. This is what we look for. By answering this question from a literature review, we, we are assured that everything is going to be efficient and effective. Now let's talk about another important thing that most people forget, establishing a conceptual framework. Now, a research in academia is often daunting and a time-consuming task, which deals with complex problems that require long-term, comprehensive, and a detailed plan. For that, a researcher is required to make decisions throughout all the steps of the research. Now, each choice has to be vindicated on a solid ground. For the latter, we stress the importance of reviewing the literature to provide sound arguments. Now, the totality of all decisions taken by a researcher, as well as, the well, as well as well the information is presented, divulges the logic and the way of thinking. The latter constitute what you refer to as a conceptual framework. Now, a conceptual framework is what is conceptual structure that provides support and on which the whole study expands. So let's read this definition according to Maxwell 1996, page 35. The conceptual framework of a study is 
a system of concepts, assumptions, expectations, beliefs, and theories that support and inform your research. Now, let me explain this idea. You see, when you write your literature review in a certain way, that reflects your thinking. Yes, theories that are there, uh, but the way you put them, your concepts also that are there, but the way you put them, the way you organize your literature review, the way, for example, you try to put definition next to a definition and you try to critically evaluate each one is going to divulge a system of thinking. And that system of thinking is going to be to constitute a framework, a skeleton of your research. So when I read your research, just from the way you write, I can understand where you're going. And this is so important. And this is why some dissertation or doctoral thesis, you just feel that there is a very, a very solid framework, while others not really. And this is really problematic because once you feel that there is a system, everything becomes easy. So now a conceptual framework, a conceptual framework ensures what? Ensures uh, ensures that the whole research is logical, co consistent, and a unified hold. Now, what is logic in this case? Logic is attained when the researcher follows a clear line of thought and makes well-informed decision. Now, the absence of any logical contradictions or incompatibility of all elements involved contribute to the consistency of the whole work. Now, finally, a framework ensures that the all parts of research fit together and seamlessly work alongside each other to achieve the desired goal. And here, why it's so important that all elements, like from the literature review to the practical side, they should be linked. And because a lot of time I find that, like literally, there is no connection between the literature review and the practical side. And this is really, really problematic. I'm trying to end, end this with a good example, with a good example. Let's say, for example, I want to use, let's say, for example, problems, uh, let's say, uh, teachers face problem in class. And I want to talk about these problems. A good literature review is going to explain to me what, what are these problems in points. Point one, two, three, four, five just an example so the same problems are going to find in a practical side if these together like they are really linked together you would feel that everything is is logical and this is why it's so important that you have to ensure that your literature review has a function in your dissertation if you feel that you are just writing for the sake of writing trust me you will end up writing something that is so boring so now if you are writing a dissertation Ask yourself, what is the function of my literature review? And with which question, which of the questions my literature review answers? If I write, for example, one question in my research, like, for example, what are the conceptual definition of this? Good, you will have to find it in the literature review. So what are the current up-to-date definitions? Okay, if I say, for example, what are the similarities and differences between, the, between definitions? You find it there. This is very, very important. I hope you have benefited from this, um, for, from this, from this video. And so, inshallah, I will provide more and, of course, more examples. So, thank you so much. Bye.